Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and we're just uh, continuing, continuing with today's notes. Uh, last time, our last video, we talked about water as a solvent. And we talk, talked about how water hydrates or dissolves or solvates uh, certain solutes. And then we talked about electrolytes and how we could have strong, weak, and non-electrolytes depending on the type of solute that water dissolves. And since water is, water is the solvent in every one of the solutions that we'll, that we'll be discussing, it's not the solvent then, it's gotta be the solute and the variety of solutes that determines if something is a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte. So let's take a look at strong, electrolyte, strong electrolytes in detail here. Strong electrolytes, it says here in our notes, strong electrolytes are substances or solutes that are completely 100% ionized or hydrated when they're dissolved in water. Some examples, very soluble salts, NaCl, KBr, etc. So very strong acids like HCl, HNO3, HClO4, and then H2SO4, and also very strong bases. And the two most popular strong bases are NaOH and KOH. All right, so very soluble salt or a strong acid or a strong base. When, when those are dissolved in water, like I said, they're 100% ionized. We have none of the reactant left. It looks just like it does in the products section on the right-hand side only. So the NaCl solid in water, it's 100% ionized into Na plus and Cl minus. Likewise, HNO3, H plus and NO3 minus, 100% ionized. H2SO4, strong acid, so it ionizes 100% to H plus and HSO4 minus. Now, HSO4 minus is also itself an acid, although it's a weak acid. So for the most part in that bracketed section up there, you have, for the most part, you're gonna have H plus and HSO4 minus. All right, but again, every one I've drawn here is 100% ionized, all right, including the NaOH, the last one. All right, so the easier it is, just starting off here on the top of page two of our notes, okay, the easier it is for a substance or a solute to form ions when dissolved in water, the better it's going to be as an electrolyte. So, once again, the easier it is for a substance or solute to form ions in solution, the better it is at conducting electricity. Strong electrolytes conduct electricity really well because there's so many ions dissolved. And ions, if you remember from last video, are the little charge carriers where the, per the two electrodes go into like the beaker of water, conducts elect or the beaker of the solution, and it completes the circuit and lights up that light bulb, right? Really bright. Okay, so number two. Well, if a strong electrolyte has 100% ionization, weak electrolytes, maybe not so much. Weak electrolytes, these are substances that ionize only slightly in water. So you are gonna get some ions. You are gonna get some charge carriers. You are gonna be able to complete that circuit and dimly light the light bulb with the two probes that you put into the uh, beaker or the solution, like in a lab demo. Now the two most common weak electrolytes are NH3 ammonia, NH3, and HC2H3O2, which is acetic acid. Every general chemistry course or uh, first year inorganic chemistry course, these are the most popular weak electrolytes, NH3 and HC2H3O2. They produce relatively few ions or charge carriers when dissolved. Take a look at the double-headed arrow there. You see most of the reactant in the example lies towards the reactant. In the reactant, there's no ions on the left-hand side. So when dissolved in water, HC2H3O2 produces some H plus and some C2H3O2 minus, but not a lot. The reaction arrow mainly lies to the left. 
So it mainly stays together as HC2H3O2, but a little bit of it ionizes. All right, so let's summarize that here in our notes at the top of page three. Because acetic acid, HC2H3O2, is a weak electrolyte, well then, then it's also a weak acid. Strong acids are strong electrolytes. Weak acids are weak electrolytes. Okay, very easy for, to remember something like that. Now let's just define weak acid. A weak acid is any acid that dissociates or ionizes only to a slight extent in aqueous solution. So it stays mainly in its reactant form or its together form. Only dissociates a little bit. So that's the most common uh, weak acid that acts as a weak electrolyte. Now let's take a look at the most common weak base, which I mentioned earlier was ammonia, NH3, midway through the last page of our notes. Well, now the most common weak base is ammonia, NH3. It says here, if it's a weak base, it's a weak electrolyte. So NH3Aq plus H2O liquid is going to produce the NH4 plus ion, ammonium, ion plus OH minus ion, hydroxide ion. But look at the reaction arrow. It's a double-headed arrow, in, and it looks like equilibrium, or most of it lies to the left as the reactants, and the reactant side has no ions. So it says here in that little star, solution is basic because OH minus ions are produced, but because very few OH minus ions are formed, NH3 is a weak base and therefore a weak electrolyte, okay? Strong acids and strong bases are strong electrolytes. Weak acids and weak bases are weak electrolytes, okay? You got it, that's how we do that. All right, we've covered number one, strong electrolytes. We've covered number two, weak electrolytes. And third one, third class classification are non-electrolytes. Now, that's not to say that these substances or these solutes don't dissolve. They do. Okay, so it says here, non-electrolytes are substances that they do dissolve in water to make a solution. But when they dissolve in water, they do not produce any ions. None. Okay, so they cannot make that light bulb light up. Some examples. Alcohol, ethanol, C2H5OH. And a popular example, sucrose or table sugar, C12H22O11. So if we had some sucrose, right, solid, like you reached into the jar and in the kitchen and you took some sugar and then you dissolved it in water, there's no ions dissolved in that water. The sucrose is dissolved, but you see by the simple equation there, it just goes from a solid to aqueous or AQ, and that's not a charged ion. Okay, that's a non-electrolyte. Now, we're going to wrap up today's uh, video here by kind of talking about how we measure the concentration of a dissolved solute. And it says here, the extent to which a solute dissolves in a solution is expressed by the solution's concentration. All right, now there are a lot of ways to express concentration, but the most popular is by far, in general chemistry anyway, uh, molarity. Okay, so concentration is most often expressed as molarity, right? And molarity is given the symbol capital M, or big M. So molarity is the number of moles of solute, okay, divided by the total liters of solution. All right, put a box around that. You're gonna need that. Molarity, big M, is moles of solute per liter of solution. So one M is one mole per liter. One molar, if you will, one molar is one mole per liter. All right, so this will be the last thing we'll do here in this video. This is an example of a molarity calculation. Our next video, we're gonna do a lot of molarity calculations, but we'll end this clip with just a quick molarity calculation. Here is our problem right here. It says, Calculate the molarity of a solution. In other words, calculate the concentration of a solution 
made by dissolving 11.5 grams of solid MeOH, sodium hydroxide, in enough water to make 1.50 liters of solution. All right, so what's the plan? Well, they want us to find molarity. So maybe we jot down the equation for, for molarity to kind of bring it to our, the forefront of our brain, to bring it to our attention. It says molarity is moles of NaOH, in other words, moles of solute, per liters of solution, or divided by liters of solution. Okay, well, I don't see moles in the given, right? So I'm going to have to calculate that. I do see liters of solution, so I just have to hold on to that. The denominator is already figured out. It was given to us. Okay, it's, it's 1.50 liters. I'm just going to hold on to that. So I'm going to start with what I'm given and put it over 1 in order to find the number of moles of NaOH. I'm looking for moles of NaOH. I can do it in one step. Start with what you're given, which is 11.5 grams NaOH. Divide by 40.00 grams of NaOH per mole. That's dividing by the molar mass. I end up with 3 sig figs, 0.288 moles of NaOH. Well, that's going to be my numerator, right? In the molarity equation. So molarity is 0.288 moles of NaOH divided by 1.50 liters of solution. And I end up with 0.192 moles per liter NaOH. Or... 0.192 molar NaOH. You can use big M as the unit, or you can use mole slash liter, mole per liter, because 1M, one, one molar, is equal to one mole per liter. Okay? So that's it for this video. Um, if you like the way I do this stuff with my handwritten notes and kind of showing you the way things flow and how we read the notes and stuff, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, we are on section four, and I got like 20 sections of general chemistry to do. And then I have, uh, gosh, 24 sections of OCHEM I'm going to be putting up over time. Okay, so thanks a lot, and have a good day.